at I Am A Hawaii this year, Cameron Wolf, who came fifth, was talking about Sebastian Kindler. He was third. He said, yeah, when Zebi trains, he trains always fasted. I think it's related to LCHF. Also, Tim O'Donnell, he was second in corner. Thanked by Yukan after the race. And how did Yukan help him? LCHF diet part 2. In this video I'm going to talk more about actual LCHF diet and the training. So what is it? It's kind of similar to ketogenic diet but the difference is it's a combination of that diet and exercise. So this method is going to improve your fat oxidation rate significantly high. You basically do this for several weeks before the race, four or five weeks. Mind you, it's not only for endurance sport, but any sports lasting longer than two hours. You can sustain higher energy level by utilizing fat as an energy source. It's my personal opinion for both health and performance point of view you shouldn't be doing that for longer than four or five weeks it shouldn't be permanent diet i use four weeks as a standard because it's been tested in several studies the reason why we didn't do that for too long is that when we are on this diet or any ketogenic diet we don't get enough insulin and insulin is needed for different functions of our body some ketogenic dieters say oh insulin is so bad for your health not always. We actually need some of that too. For normal ketogenic diet, just done only with diet, you have to bring down the carbohydrate intake down to 20 to 30 grams per day. But for LCHF diet, you can take about 80 to 120 grams a day, depending on your activity levels or the size of your body. That's because you do more exercise, like in my case, I did triathlon training and even after taking 100 grams a day, I can stay in ketosis. When we do endurance and sub-threshold training in ketosis, we can improve our fat oxidation significantly. And not only that, we can actually utilize fat as an energy source at even higher intensity. As an example of fat oxidation, normally people burn about 0.6 gram of fat per minute. By doing LCHF, you can double the amount. And I have even seen some studies saying that they can bring up to 1.5 grams per minute of fat. That's quite a lot. I'm gonna explain how much that is in reality in the next video, by the way. So, after the three, four weeks of LCHF training and diet combination, about a few days before the race, you're going to do light carb loading. So we can have enough glycogen in our muscles when we stand on the start line. I didn't think it was going to work because on race day in the morning before the start or during the race, you take so much sugar and insulin level is gonna go up like that. The fat oxidation level is gonna go down then what's the point? But I found this one, you can. It's a super starch product and when we ingest super starch, the blood sugar level doesn't spike like that. So the insulin level also stays not so high. That means we can keep the high fat oxidation rate during the race. Otherwise it doesn't make sense, right? Otherwise it's not gonna make sense because you took four weeks to build up your fat oxidation level, but on a race diet, it just goes down. So that was a game changer. And when we keep the high fat oxidation rate throughout the rice, we can keep glycogen level high, meaning we can go faster without bonking. So if you haven't subscribed, please do that. See you in the next video.